Hi everyone. So this session is about uh, Java object oriented programming tutorial. My name is Pradeep and I'll be your instructor to this webinar session. And let's move on to the agenda of today's session. So today we will talk about what an object oriented programming is, the difference between object oriented programming and procedural programming. And we will also cover a few of object oriented programming concepts like inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction and encapsulation. And as a part of your Java certification training, this is your roadmap. It is a 14 day session, 14 into three hours. So each day, three hour session will happen. And this is instructor led session. And there are a lot of hands on exercises that you would be asked to work on in these cars from introduction to the frameworks, packages, JSP, servlets, uh, um, Spring um, services, what is service-oriented architecture and all that will be covered as a part of this session in this 14-day session. Here, you can see that it is covering Spring, Ajax, and design patterns. So this will be a seven weekend program or you know 14-day program uh, three hours each session for 14 days and uh, there is a lot of coverage that is there as a part of uh, this course okay okay now let us understand what is object oriented programming object oriented programming so there are various programming paradigms that that are there in the technological world like you know linear programming structural programming Similarly, you have something called object-oriented programming, which actually is widely being used. Uh, so what is an object-oriented programming? It is a methodology or a programming paradigm that uh, you know um, is used to design your program using classes and objects. So what are classes and what are objects? Classes are uh, you know, blueprint to the objects. You know, what are objects? Objects are like instances of the classes. So what, what exactly are these objects? Objects are nothing but the real world entities that has a properties and behavior. So what are properties and behavior? If you are, if you are already aware of any, any programming, you know, uh, you know, something called variables and functions, right? So, Properties are nothing but uh, variables for that object. Let's say you have a class called an animal. So an animal will have properties like whether um, number of legs, number of eyes, number of ears, and can it walk or not? So these are all the properties. Can it fly? So these are all the properties of the cla uh, class called uh, you know an animal. And what are the behaviors? Behaviors are nothing but the functions. So how does it eat and how does it sleep? Uh, how much time does it sleep, et cetera? And all of the functions that it does are the behaviors that the real world entity does. So what does an object consist of? Object consists of the properties and behaviors. And what are classes? Classes are nothing but the blueprint to these objects. So these also have properties and behaviors, and you know, this uh, classes decides the properties and behaviors of the objects. Okay, and I will give you one example. So if you say um, a bird is a class, then sparrow would be an object of uh, a class called bird. Okay, and a pigeon is an object of uh, a class called bird. Okay, so class is a type, it is a blueprint, and object is an instance of a class. So object can also be defined as an instance of a class. Objects are instances of a class. How do you define an object? Our objects are real world entities that will have its own properties and behaviors, and it is also called as, uh, it, it, it also can be defined as an instance of a class. Okay. So, the same thing. So each of these breeds of a class called dog, which are nothing but the objects of a class called dog, will have its own properties called breed, size, age, color, etc., etc., and all. 
and it will have their own behavior like eat, sleep, run, bark. Um, how does it bark? How does it run? How does it sleep? How does it eat? What does it eat? Etc. And all can be the behavior or the functions that you know this uh, object can perform. Uh, what is an object? Object is nothing but uh, a dog of type. Uh, this dog of, of type, I'm very bad at, you know, the various breeds of dogs, you know. So these are four different breeds of dogs, you know, four objects of dogs uh, of a class called dog, okay? And they'll have different properties and behavior. So now that we have understood what an object-oriented programming is, so we will see the differences between an object-oriented programming and procedural programming. So object-oriented programming as it deals with objects and classes, you first define objects and classes and then you know you uh, develop the functions for that object, right? So it is a bottom-up approach and when it comes to the procedural programming, it is a top-down approach. And in object-oriented programming, uh, it is divided into various objects. So it is all about the objects. In the procedural programming, it is divided into functions. So what is a, an example of a procedural programming is like you have MySQL or PLSQL where you develop a procedure if you have already known. So how do you develop that? It will be divided into various procedures, right? So each step is each step that you want to execute in uh, the MySQL or MSQL or Oracle. So that you will write as a uh, as different steps inside the procedure, and it is divided into functions, right? And object-oriented programming has got access modifiers. Access modifiers are something that can restrict the access of your uh, access of the properties and the behavior of the object. Okay. And whereas in the procedural programming, it it doesn't have access modifier. So what what does it what does you get with the access modifiers? Is you get security. You can restrict the access of the properties and behavior of your objects in object-oriented programming. So objects can move, communicate with other objects using member functions. So member functions are nothing but behavior. Okay, here data can move freely from function to function in the system, but uh, uh, in the objects, they they can move and communicate with other member functions uh, with other objects through only through member functions. So you'll call a function of an object from another object. So that is how two objects will interact in object-oriented programming. And object-oriented programming is definitely more secure compared to procedural programming, as it as it has got more of access modifiers and many more things. Yeah. So it supports overloading. What is an overloading? You can overload a function. We will, we will, we will look on to what is overloading in this session, okay? So we will understand this point of what is an overloading, okay? Object-oriented programming supports overloading, whereas procedural programming does not support overloading, right? So these are some differences between object-oriented programming and procedural programming. Now let us look at what are object-oriented programming concepts are. Okay, what are object-oriented programming concepts? You have four primary concepts in object-oriented programming. They are inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. So we'll see each of these in. Uh, we'll get and in, get introduced to each of these in the next 45 minutes. Okay. So what are object-oriented programming concepts? Inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. So what is object orientation? Object orientation is nothing but you know, programming, developing a program with objects and classes. What are objects and classes? Objects are nothing but the real world entities that has got properties and behavior. Right? And what it is an instance of a class. What is a class? Class is a blueprint to an object. Example, if I say a bird is a class, then a sparrow is an object of a class called bird, right? So objects are instances of a class. So bird is an instance of, sparrow is an instance of a class called bird, right? It will have 
the property. So the properties and functions will change as per the objects created, objects getting created for the classes. Right? We will see them programmatically. So I have created because of the time constraint is just scheduled for one hour. So I've created one sample Java project. The rest of all projects are closed here. This is one Java project. So this is my IDE. So development environment for Java platform Eclipse. So you can also use IntelliJ. You can also use Visual Studio Code. It is of your choice to choose your IDE generally. That would be uh, uh, no. Uh, so which IDE is to be used will be decided among the project groups right before the start of the project and all the team members of the project would generally be using what will be decided to be used as a part of that particular project execution. Okay, so here I've downloaded Eclipse and I've created one Java project. So I'll delete this and create it for you. So, so these are all closed, don't ignore what you are seeing on the screen here. So I'll create one project called dynamic web project. So it could also be a simple Java project too. I'm just creating a dynamic web project for no reason. Okay, I will say Java project object oriented programming concepts. Oops. What happened? This way, I deleted the earlier project, but probably there are some traces. I will say Java project underscore one. So some random name that I'm giving to this project. So it got created and what you see here is SRC. So in SRC, we will write our Java programs. Okay, we'll create one object. What do we create? We will create an object. Ah, sorry, we will create a class called so how do you create a class? I'll right click on this folder. Click, uh, there is a new option that is there and underneath that new option, you have something called class. I'll create a class called, what do I create? Animal. I'll create a class called animal. So I'm using a default package. If you don't know what a package is, then so packages are used to organize your code in Java. So animal, it will have properties, right? So what are the properties? Int properties are nothing but variables in text. What else? Uh, int ice, or I'll say number of links. Number of ice. So there is a reason why I, I am typing the variable name to be of like this, starting with a small letter and then making it camel case. So in Java, you have this coding convention that you would follow to uh, define your names of the variables in a camel case way. Okay, so you can write function saying that public, this is an access modifier. Okay, public is that it can be accessed publicly. Okay, public. Void part say name. You can say I am an animal. So I just have developed a function like this, and I'll create one more class called main class in which I create a main function here. So what is a main function? Your execution of the Java code happens from the main function. So I'll create an object of type uh, animal. Animal. Animal is equal to new animal. So this is the way you create an object. This is an object of type class. So I can do this, call a function of animal. Where am I? From here, and when I execute this, run as Java application, what will happen? I am an animal is printed. This line of code will actually print system.out.println will print the statements that we give as a part of the argument to this 
in the console so so this is a class and i have created an object of the class using the new keyword and i was able to access the function available in the class in that object and call that function so when i call that function the function got executed and it printed what we has to do there okay so i can i can define my logic inside this function whatever that i would be requiring to perform i will be defining it here so we will quickly move on to what are object oriented programming concepts inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation so we'll first see what is inheritance right what is inheritance so what is the little meaning of inheriting inheriting is nothing but acquiring the properties of the parent object is called inheritance right acquiring the properties of somebody else is called inheriting is it so little meaning is the meaning of the object oriented programming concept inheritance also so if, you, if there are two objects one is a parent object and the other one is a child object and the child object inherits all the properties are and behavior of the parent object right this is called inheritance and in java it is possible so what is this called this is called as an easy relationship which is a parent child relationship so here is a good example that is there in the animal kingdom you have mammals you have reptiles you have amphibians and you have birds mammals a mammal is an animal right a reptile is an animal amphibian is an animal bird is an animal again let's say horse is a mammal right so what what does it have uh, what does it mean so animal is the parent object and mammal is child object and horse is a child object of a mammal right so horse inherits all the properties of mammals and uh, mammal inherit all the properties and behavior of an object called animal right a, a class called animal so let us see this programmatically so inheriting the properties of an object to acquire all its properties and behavior of its parent object is called inheritance okay so this is super or parent class these are child classes so we will see programmatically that we, this is an animal and let's say i have something called i'll create one object called mammal is the spelling right I'm not sure yes okay so mammal what do i do i extend mammal with animal so what is happen mammal will inherit all the properties and functions of class called animal right so in the main what do i do i create instead of uh, object called animal i will create here an object called mammal right what will happen so will i be able to call so in the mammal class i don't have a method called who am i so let us see if i will be able to call the method called who am i from the mammal object yes right so it means that the object mammal has inherited the properties and behavior of the parent class called animal so why is mammal a child and parent animal a parent because mammal extends animal right so let us see printing this now i am an animal should be printed twice so one from the execution of uh, the function from this object and the other one from the mammal object right so i can also do create one more class called horse and say horse extends mammal right so in mammal now i will create one method or a function called public void is mammal so i will say this out i am a mammal okay so now let's see in the main method 
I'll create a object of type or and then we'll be able to access is mammal I'll be able to access this but from animal will I be able to access the method called is mammal no so you see the error happening there in the compile time by itself so it is giving an error because animal is the parent object so all the properties and behavior of the parent object will be inherited to the child object but not from the child object to the parent object so when i print from as java application so you can see this is getting printed right so what is this called this is called multiple inheritance so you have two levels right so mammal is a child of animal and horse is a child of mammal this is called multiple inheritance okay so what are the advantages of inheritance? You can reuse the code. You can create a function in the parent class and use it throughout your application in the child classes. Right? And it, it, has, it gives you a lot of extensibility. You can extend and you know that this brings in the concept of overriding. We'll see what an overriding is in polymorphism. And you can have data hiding also. So you don't need to show the data let's say in the horse class you see the method is not available it is hidden right it, it is hidden and it is available in the parent class okay it can also act as data hiding okay so types of inheritance single inheritance is nothing but one parent and one child multi-level inheritance is nothing but the chain of inheritance and hierarchical inheritance is also multiple you can have a hierarchy of inheritance so single Single parent class, class A extends class B, multi level class A, class B, and class C. Hierarchical inheritance is nothing but so class A and class B extends class A, and class C also extends class A of class B. This way. Okay, so this is hierarchical inheritance. You can have multiple hierarchies. Let us move on to what is polymorphism. What is poly? Poly is many, right? Morph. What is morph? Can behave amorphous, we will say, right? What is amorphous? So it can change into multiple forms. Polymorphism is nothing but the literal word of poly polymorphism is like it can change into multiple forms. The right? so same is the thing here. Polymorphism is a property of an object which allows it to take multiple forms. Okay. There, there are two types of polymorphism. One is compile time polymorphism and the other one is runtime polymorphism. Okay. So we'll see that programmatically what a polymorphism is okay so now what will i do in mammal i'll delete this function i'll delete this function and you have something called who am i in animal class the same is something that i'll write in mammal also okay okay even in the child class i have something called who am i the same function that is available so here i'll say mammal okay here i'll create one more class called bird which extends animal and i'll override the method again we have my method again in the bird class right so here i'll say i am a bird Okay, in the main class, what will I do? So I've created an object of mammal. Similarly, I'll create an object of bird. Right? So it is the same function, right? OMI is the function. And Mammal is an animal and bird is an animal. So it is taking two different forms here. So you can see that the same function is behaving differently in different instances, right? So in from mammal, it says, it, it prints that I am a mammal and from the bird class, it prints uh, I am a bird. Both are of type animal, right? So the same function is behaving in two different forms. This is called overriding 
Okay, so what we have now seen is a runtime polymorphism or a dynamic polymorphism, which is overriding. Okay, sorry, this is a typo here. These are rules for overriding, okay, not overloading. This is also called as overriding. Okay, what we have done here in the program that we have seen, we have overridden the OMI function from the parent class in the child class. Now we will see what is compile time polymorphism. So I will create a class called math utils okay in which i will create a function called public void add okay here i will say in t in b very simple function okay very simple method what will i do i will print a plus b in the main function what do i do so i will comment all these such that they will not get executed if i comment it means that i am invalidating this part of code what do I do? Math utils object I'll create. Okay, in math utils I'll call add. I will say 12, 13. So what will be printed here? The sum of 12 and 13 will be printed. Okay, you can interact with me through this question span. You can write any question, or you can also interact with me through the question span. So this is printed 25, right? So what will I do? I will overload this method. It is not overriding, it is overloading. So I will add another argument called okay. So same add function with two arguments and with three arguments that are there, right? So I will now go to main and then if I want to add three numbers, then for that object, you see, so it can take three objects. Let's say your calculator is there, right? You have a calculator, so you can keep on adding numbers to that. So how is it possible? It is possible through overloading, right? So this is another polymorph, same function called add function that can behave in two different ways. This is compile time polymorphism. And what we have seen earlier, who am I function getting overridden? in the child functions uh, in the child classes called mammal and bird they're overridden and this is just an annotation if you put an annotation or if you don't put it is okay it will work, program will work okay it is just to for you to understand that this method is overridden you just will annotate it as this is just demarcation purpose that you will annotate on top of the method that it is overridden from the super class. Okay. What is a super class? Super class again don't get confused it is nothing but parent class. So these are two types of polymorphisms that you have in Java. One is runtime polymorphism and the other one is compile time polymorphism. What is a compile time polymorphism? It is method overloading. So single method with multiple arguments, different arguments list. So in the add function that are Overloaded, you have seen two arguments in the first one and three arguments in the second one, right? So this is compile time polymorphism. Or you can also call it as method overloading or function overloading. Method and function are one and the same. Okay. It can have different return types also. So what is a return type we haven't seen? We can see that in a greater detail when we are going for a full end course. Okay. So this is just one hour program, one hour thing that we are doing. So our, whatever the functions that we have defined so far are, are all of no argument types. Okay? So in compile time polymorphism, you can have different return types also, okay? but the same arguments. You can have same return type and different arguments. So both are considered to be as a compile time polymorphism. You can throw different exceptions. You can have different access modifiers. Both can have different access. We haven't seen access modifiers. But in the full length Java program or Java course, you will be covering with all uh, types of access modifiers, access specifiers that you'll have, and the techniques that you can follow to control the access from various classes. Okay. And runtime polymorphism is also called as method overriding. So, rules for method overriding are overriding methods, argument list must, ma must match with the overridden methods. Arguments will be the same. Right? If if the arguments are different, it doesn't mean that it is an overridden method. Yeah, the return type must be the same subtype of the 
what are types and subtypes are something that we can also see in a greater detail when we are when we are having in a full length java codes okay so uh, for for an instance so let's say subtype is nothing but uh, you know child of the parent you know so if the written type of function let's say is an animal the written type of overridden method can be either mammal or bird or horse or animal again but it can't be something else it can't be a book it can't be anything else okay then it then it will not be called as an overloaded method access le level can't be more restrictive than overridden method so what does what does it mean more restrictive so what are all different access levels that we have are like you now you have private public default okay and and various uh, private default public uh, these are various access mod uh, specifiers that you'll have and private is like it, it restricts the access from accessing that function from a different package different class etc and all okay so you can have that covered in a greater detail in the full length java session okay or you may also go through that and abstraction abstraction is like what is an abstraction abstraction literal meaning of abstraction so why am i saying uh, saying the literal meanings of each of these terms because uh, the actual meaning of this or oops concept is also related to the literal meaning of that word okay so what is abstraction you are abstracting something what does it mean so it is like you know hiding the implementation details from the user and providing only the functionality associated with it is called abstraction right so there are two ways to do achieve this abstraction one is through abstract classes and the other one is through interfaces what are abstract classes abstract classes will have functions that need not be implemented and the child class of the abstract class uh, will implement the will override and implement the methods that are defined abstract so there will not be any implementation as a part of that function abstract function and uh, an abstract classes a class can also have implemented methods whereas in interface it can't have implemented methods so we'll see this programmatically what's time now we have 15 minutes to cover two more so we'll try to do that so i'll create an abstract class let us make this animal class abstract public abstract class okay so i can say this as abstract method public abstract so when i say abstract abstract is the keyword to make the method abstract so when i say abstract it should not have any implementation to it okay so who implemented it now the child class called bird child class called mammal implemented that particular function so right in the main what do i do i'll create a instance of animal what is an instance of animal class it is nothing but creating an object of a class called animal okay is equal new horse so i can do this okay so i'm creating an object of type animal of uh, an object of animal of type hearts okay so i will call the method called the who am i okay so how do i navigate to this function i can do a control and then do this when i go there there is no implementation logic over here i have hidden that implementation logic whereas the implementation logic is available in the implementation class okay this is an abstract class this is an implementation class so the implementation method is available in implementation class when i do this i am a ml is printed here so who implemented this method it is left to the implementation class of this abstract class so what is an implementation class of an abstract class it is nothing but the child class of the abstract class right so if you go into this method there is no implementation it is abstracted it is abstracted and it is not shown to the end user who is the end user here the, the user or the programmer who is consuming this method is the user okay so you have hidden the implementation to the user 
and you have given the abstract class there and the abstract method is implemented by the implementation class same is the case with and and in the abstract class you can have non abstract methods also okay public why say hello okay so i will say sys out hello okay so i will go to this main function what can i do i can call that function also animal dot say hello so it can have both abstract functions and non abstract functions whereas when i create an interface called i animal okay so i animal interface animal i'm just doing this okay i animal is an interface what do i do here i'll just just for the sake of time just copying and pasting so i need not have variables if i have variables then they are to be initialized in an interface okay so i have a method called who am i okay what do i do instead of extends i will implement uh, uh, let's say i have a class called reptile okay so reptile is a class and i will implement the interface called i animal okay so when i implement the interface called i animal i will have to implement all the methods that are defined as abstract in the interface called i animal okay so who am i is out i am and i am at the time okay so now i will go to the main function and then try to create object for reptile sorry i will try to create an object for the interface i animal okay so implementation method is reptile right so what do i do i animal dot who am i right so i will comment everything these are two types of comments okay you can go through so i am a reptile so whether i can have methods that can be implemented in public void say hello can i do this in an interface no i can't do that right right so what is the error says it can only accept the abstract methods okay interface cannot have the methods that are implemented okay so this can be implemented poly abstraction can be achieved in two ways one is through abstract classes abstract classes must be declared with an abstract keyword and the method abstract methods are to be declared with abstract methods and you can also have abstract and non abstract methods it can't be instantiated you can't instantiate an abstract method. only the implementation class can be instantiated it can be instantiated with the implementation method you can't say new some abstract class okay you can have constructors and what are constructors we haven't seen my friends okay and what is static is also not what we have we are going to cover as a part of this just remember if you already know java just remember that you can have constructors and static methods too okay you can have final methods also so interfaces interface in java is a blueprint of a class which consists of static constants and abstract methods it enables multiple inheritance and so what is multiple inheritance we have seen multi level inheritance right what is multiple inheritance so it is not possible directly in java it is indirectly possible through interfaces so if you know c c++ then you know what is multiple inheritance multiple inheritance is it possible yes it is possible only through interfaces okay we will not cover what is multiple inheritance just get that word introduced so that it can be left for your self learning or can be there in your mind for you to learn okay it provides 100% of abstraction so what does it mean 
An interface cannot have non-abstract methods, right? So a class extends another class. A class implements an interface, right? That is that is what we have seen, right? Reptiles implements reptiles implements I animal interface, right? An interface extends an interface. You can have two interfaces that as a parent and child relationship. Okay. What is an interface? Interface is a blueprint of a class which consists of static constants and abstract methods. Did we move to encapsulation? Yes. Okay. So what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is like a mechanism to wrap up the data and code acting on the methods together as a single unit. So you are binding the member variables with the functions in the Java. Okay. So a what is what is a class? A class consists of variables and behavior, right? So properties and behavior, right? What are properties? Properties are nothing but variables. Behavior is nothing but functions. So how do you bind the variables and functions? It is through encapsulation. It is a mechanism of wrapping the data and code acting on the methods together as a single unit is called encapsulation. You encapsulate that. So it is achieved by declaring the variables of the class as private and then providing the public setter and getter methods to modify and view the variable values. Okay, so we will see this programmatically. Let's say here we have a class called animal. I will change this to a, a non abstract class. Okay, so now you have these two variables. Okay, you restrict the axis of these variables. So how can you generally access those variables? You can access like this. Okay, I'll create a class called animal. Okay, so animal dot number of eyes is equal to two. I can set this directly, right? Right. So restricting the direct axis of the variables from animal classes and allowing the axis only through setters and getter, getter methods is called abstractions. That is like securing your code. Okay. So how do you do that? I'll declare this as private. So if I declare this as private, I'll not be able to access that particular variable. Let us see that animal dot. So I can only access number of eyes here, but not, sorry, but not number of legs. So you copy and show it to you is equal to. So you see an error happening there. What is that error? It says that it is not visible. What does it mean that it is not visible? It is declared private. And so you can't access this. Okay, how can you give the access to that? Go to animal. Just create getters and setters to that. There is an easier way to create the getters and setters using the IDE. So why do we use IDE for easier development of the code, right? So number of legs is there. So you have a getter method for number of legs and you have a setter method for number of legs. So how do you set the value for number of legs now? Sorry. You can say animal dot set number of legs or okay and the value will be set for that and if you want to see if it is set or not then how do you access the number of legs for that animal object animal dot get number of legs so when i do this as you have set four here it will be printing four cool so restricting the access of the member variables of the class and uh, class or object and giving the access through getters and setters method to secure the variables of the object. Secure the access of the variables of the object is called encapsulation. So how do you achieve that? By declaring the member variables as private and giving the setters and getter methods in the class to modify the view of the variables, okay? So public setter, public getter. So if you again define that getter and setter methods as private, you will not be able to do that. So your getter and setter methods should be public. Okay. That will also be called as a plain old Java object, POJOS. Okay, plain old Java. So we have seen 
what is um, what are all these four object oriented programming concepts so thank you thanks for joining bye bye have a very good day